righty. Uh, um, today, we're going to cover some pretty cool stuff in the world of VBT education. We've got uh, Taylor Nelson Cook on from um, Apex Sports Performance uh, down in Texas, and we're going to cover some pretty cool stuff uh, in regards to utilizing VBT with um, MLB or baseball specific athletes. Um, so we're just going to kind of get right to it in this uh, quick 30 minute conversation. Um, and so very briefly, uh, Taylor, I'd love you to introduce yourself and, uh, and kind of how you got to where you are and um, a little bit about um, your role over at APEC as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, Nika, of course, starting off, man, thank you for letting me get on here and talk about this. Uh, I, I care a lot about our Major League Baseball players and, of course, our Minor League Baseball players as well. So um, anything I can share to kind of help anybody else in this realm um, to help achieve the goals of helping those guys climb the ladder and get to the show um, is obviously huge for me. So I appreciate you letting me get on here and talk about it. Now, as far as my role at APEC Fort Worth, I am the training director of APEC Fort Worth. So I'm in charge of all training. That is everything from ages five, all the way through our middle school program, high school program, uh, all of our, all of our professional sports, and then also just overseeing our adult training program as well. My other side, my other side jobs that I get to do inside of APIC is I'm the lead programmer for both facilities. So I'm in charge of all programs um, from ages five all the way through our athletic development program. The only programs I don't write or that I'm not in charge of are adult spherical program. So I get to make sure I'm overseeing the improvement of the program, as well as making sure that it has continuity between both facilities and that we're doing what's best for the athlete here in East, Te um, in East Texas and Fort Worth. Awesome, super, super cool. Cool, yeah, no, and I appreciate the, uh, the introduction there as well. Um, I'd love to kind of cover, uh, I guess uh, we can dive right into kind of the programming aspects and then um, your introduction to velocity-based training specifically as well. And um, yeah. I guess kind of what your philosophy around programming is, what your ethos is, and, and, and how you kind of incorporate BBT into that as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. Ask any questions, any questions. Uh, awesome. Okay, cool. Um, I, I guess, I mean, start kind of with your, uh, for baseball players specifically, kind of what you, what you do from like needs analysis, um, evaluation to um, actually implementing training and then taking them all the way up through, uh, you know, the off season, you know, preseason, postseason, all, all of the above. Yeah. So with our, with, with our major league baseball program, right. And so when I say major league baseball program, we probably have a pretty good split between minor league guys and then professional guys. So we currently have 39 guys that are trusting us this off season that range anywhere from short a double a um, to triple a to the major leagues. Right. So of those 39 guys, I'd say it's probably a pretty good split. Um, 50, 50, maybe, maybe split 40, 60 um, where we have 40 major league guys and 60 minor league guys currently. So whenever I reference any major league, baseball players I'm really referring to all of those guys so the biggest thing is I mean, we actually have a 13 point biomechanical analysis that we have them go through when they first come in um, and that's typically from a throwing standpoint then on top of that we actually have a stat test that we run them through um, when I say we that stat test is actually run through Tom House Sports so we have a Tom House MPA coach National Pitching Association coach that's housed in Fort Worth um, and he'll run that stat test with them. So what happens once they do that stat test, that tells us from a baseball perspective, whether they need shoulder speed, shoulder strength, torso speed, torso strength, lower body speed, lower body strength, more hip shoulder separation. And then it also has a shoulder screen that goes along with that. Um, and that's just once again, from a baseball perspective. So once they've done that stat test, then they'll do our strength assessment. So we kind of base a lot of it off the 90 mile per hour formula. Um, there's a lot of different measurables that, I mean, people a lot smarter than me have come out with um, to make sure that you are hitting those weight room goals to protect your baseball players. Um, and as long as we've been able to help hit those goals, our guys have been able to stay really healthy and perform really well. So that's kind of our basic layout. Um, we'll do anything from a 10 yard sprint, a backwards sprint. We'll do non counter movement jump, counter movement jump, depth drop jump. We'll do um, uh, two times your body weight on hex bar, back squat. We'll look for that. We'll do anti rotation chop, anti rotation lift, uh, 
and then we'll look and make sure that we're getting their height in inches and then finding out the optimal body weight that they need based on their height. And then we have our own movement and mobility assessment. So we, we, we like to promote our eight point performance. So when I say we promote our eight point performance, we like to make sure the body trains in all three planes of motion, sagittal plane, frontal plane, transverse plane. Um, and there are certain movements that we'll take them through and see how their body responds to being put in those positions. Um, and we kind of give it a pass or fail from there as well. That's awesome. Uh, what, I mean, I guess, uh, besides kind of the, um, the biomechanical stuff, what, uh, I guess pieces of like what your technology, um, have you guys kind of learned about and started implementing, uh, in your room? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, we can obviously start here cause we started implementing the perch this year. Um, so luckily uh, Bobby's the one that actually learned about perch from Jake Santora. And so what happened was Bobby and Jake built a relationship, um, Bobby knows I'm a nerd for numbers <laughs> um, and he knows I could, I could stare at a computer with a bunch of numbers all day and I could probably waste more time staring at numbers and trying to formulate numbers and then I probably should be able to, um, but once he, <laughs> we'll, got, we'll get to, we'll get to that part. We'll get to that. Yeah. Part. We'll get to, you'll find out <laughs> soon. Uh, yeah. So once he, he got to talking to Jake and um, Bobby actually got a perch uh, sent down to us here in Fort Worth. And we got to use it and obviously fell in love with it. We got one more. So we're working with two right now and having two is kind of an ideal number. We can, we always want more, right. Um, but having a two is kind of an ideal number because that way we're able to do some of our force velocity profiling on our main exercises. Um, and that also kind of gives us an estimated max that I get to adjust to the guys as they train throughout the off season. So that way we're using that estimated max to hit in on those zones that we want them to improve on. So that's kind of the short of it. Yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. Um, are you guys using any like force plate data as well or not so much? So, no, we don't use any force plates. We actually, I mean, we just use a just jump mat. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're just, um, we're assessing from there. The, I mean, the other thing we do is we utilize our Kaiser equipment. So the Kaiser equipment yeah. will show you in wattage. We'll show yeah. you in wattage how much wattage you're producing. Um, and so kind of whenever I go into my sheet that I created, I'll like that numbers in Watts, some numbers are in pounds, some numbers are in Watts, but yeah. we, we utilize that. And the biggest thing, I mean, like I said, as you'll see is tracking those numbers, right. Is having a place where you can go to get all of those numbers relatively easy to make sure that things are going in the right direction. And you're actually improving on the things that you say you want to improve on. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I guess I'm kind of curious too, like for, from, from a baseball playing perspective, right? Like there's obviously many sports out there. Um, I think that, I think football has more or less kind of, and Olympic weightlifting is more or less kind of popularized velocity-based training. Um, but baseball, like talk, talk to us a little bit about um, utilizing this kind of technology for that population, right? Like this is a super long season. These guys have to be like unbelievably bulletproof. Um, and yeah. maybe they're not maxing out every day. Right. So like we your technology, right. we're talking about VBT, like how is this helpful for them? Right. So, I mean, I, I hate to say it like this because it almost sounds like I'm giving too much away, but utilizing the perch in VBT with a baseball player has almost been a, I mean, it's, it's, I say, I say cheap in a, I say cheap in a way that. I, I can't believe it's this easy. <laughs> um, and, and, and I say that because in reality, whenever we talk about our major league baseball players and our minor league baseball players, it's really two different populations, right? Minor league guys, um, they're not getting 160 games on them. You know, they're not, they're not getting the wear and tear. Of, I mean, you'll have three day home stands, four day home stands, seven, seven day home stands, you know, with one day in between. That means these guys are having to warm up, having to, work out we're having to play games stand on their feet you know they're playing one of the most volitional sports in the world I mean you do throwing a baseball is one of the highest velocity things that you can do you know and having to swing a bat and hit the baseball is one of the hardest things you do in sports you know if someone's batting 300 in reality that's not a very good number but that's great <laughs> You know, I mean, if they hit the ball once every three times, like that's really good for them. So they're playing a sport that's really negative and that tends to wear and tear on the brain and the body, right? And having to do that over and over again. So what we've done this off season 
is we've really started making sure that we use the perch data and we're utilizing the numbers for, and I say the numbers, the velocities that we're trying to hit to hone in on the adaptations we're trying to create, right? A lot of times it's guesswork. You know, if, if, if you're not measuring, you're just guessing. So whenever we're doing a back squat or a hex bar deadlift, um, you know, or a reverse lunge or things of that nature, we are trying to make sure that we're either one, building strength, two, building power, you know, three, it could be a speed strength or strength speed focus based along the force velocity curve um, and what they need specifically. So what we've been able to do is guys that don't necessarily have as much wear and tear on their bodies, we get to kind of push them a little bit harder. You know, we can, we, we may have five sets where they're doing three sets focusing on more power development and then two sets more on strength speed. So we're really hitting two different types of adaptations within one workout. Um, we're just splitting that up across five sets, right? Um, and then because we know what velocities we're moving at and we have the right weight, we know that we're creating that adaptation, right? And the goal is to create an adaptation for power and for speed, you know, to be able to transfer that onto the diamond so that they can play their sport at a high level. Um, now on the inverse of that, we have a couple guys that, I mean, they played over 150 games this past year. And so what happens is once they get in there, five sets may not be good on their tendons, ligaments, and joints, <laughs> you know, but how are we going to make sure that we're delivering an elite level product for them? Um, can we get them the same results in three sets as we're getting with other guys who may get five? Um, and by using the perch, we've been able to do that. I mean, I'm confident to say that because um, we check in with them whenever they're doing their skill work. And I mean, we, we utilize our sprint numbers and we utilize our vertical jump numbers as kind of what we check in the weight room to make sure we're making those changes. Um, so those guys that played in the MLB, I mean, the guys that played in the MLB this past year, I mean, mind you, they probably did less total work overall compared to other guys, but they improved at the exact same rate as the guys who were doing five sets. So we were able to really lock in on that and focus on that utilizing the perch and obviously everything we know and kind of the sheets I get to show you in a little bit. Yeah, no, that's incredible. I, I mean, I love stories like that too. And, and, and the ability to um, measure and, and manage the work and outputs as well, uh, just to kind of enhance the, the, um, the adaptations that you're looking for, right? Like sport exists outside of the weight room, the weight room should enhance what's right. happening on the field. Right. And, exactly. and it comes down to that. So yeah, I mean, and you, you kind of like touched on this as well, but I mean, as far as like the importance of weight room technology, it, it feels like it's exactly that, right? Like managing um, the health and wellness of these guys kind of on, a, on an annual basis as well. Um, I'm curious from their perspective, like what is kind of the buy-in cycle look like from them? Like, is this something where they're like, Doc, I don't want to do with this today, coach. Like, I don't want technology in here, whatever. Or are they pretty excited about it as well? Yeah, to be honest, the first month, the first month when we were kind of introducing it, I mean, and we we slow roll it pretty good to start um, as as anybody that cares about the health and wellness of your players would. Um, we, I mean, obviously we had the perch on them, but it was like, hey, I want a control three seconds down and then I want you to just stand up with speed, right? Not really trying to create any adaptations, just overall general preparation, right? looking for quality of movement, making sure that the movements that we're looking for are correct, looking for the correct joint angles um, that build the foundation for later on, right? So obviously whenever we're doing, you know, four sets of eight on a reverse lunge, they're not very happy about it because it's pretty high volume and it's not very much weight. Um, but that's kind of where we start to get, I mean, our baseline numbers to build off of, right? So having to set it up and have it get, have it get all set up for them and making sure that the camera is set for their height. Um, they, they didn't like it at first, but after that first month, after you, after you kind of shake out the kinks of one, me being a coach and being over the top about it, probably, you know, and then them, them seeing the numbers, once they saw the numbers, um, baseball players are big into numbers, right? Like, obviously it's, it's a huge sport whenever it comes to, 
looking at your hitting percentage, all, I mean, everything that gets tossed out there now. So once I got to show them the numbers and once they got to see how we were utilizing them to improve their performance, that kind of, that was all the buy-in they needed, right? Um, just kind of getting over that first hump and knowing that they got over that first hump, then I could have guys say, hey, now that you understand how to use it, here's what we're going to do, right? You're going to go to 60% of your max, and I want you aiming for this velocity between here and here, right? Um, and we utilize a lot of resources that have been put out there to kind of gauge what those velocities should be to make sure we're creating that adaptation. Some days, those guys would hit over that. We know that they're, that they're firing on all cylinders, you know, and kind of there. And that means we know they're able to push it a little more that day. Right. Sometimes guys would come in and they would start off a little, you know, they start off a little hesitant. Um, I would look at their velocities and the weight and where they should be. If they were hitting a little bit lower, then I would be able to adjust the weight to get inside of the velocity range we want to create the adaptation we're looking for. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And yeah, baseball players are so, so analytical. I can only imagine that having this kind of data in front of them is super helpful. Um, are they ever pushing back at you uh, as far as like, uh, like when you pop in and, and you got to lower the weight or something like that, just to adhere to the velocity threshold and the adaptation that you're looking for? Do they ever push back on you or, or try to challenge you on it? Or are they pretty bought into the? Yeah, actually, I don't think I had, I mean, ironically enough, once I tell somebody, Hey, let's use lighter weight. They're typically like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. it was it was whenever it was whenever I would tell guys, you know, I said, hey, I want you to hit I want you to hit between 0.7 and 0.75 on this lift, you know, and then they would hit 0.76. And I said, hey, like. This shows me right now that your central nervous system is prepared to be challenged today. Maybe you might be able to add a little more load to get into that 0.7, 0.75 range, even though your numbers right now aren't saying that. Right. Yeah. And say, so now what I want you to do is I want you to add five pounds on each side, 10 pounds total. And I want you to try and see if you can continue to move it at that same speed, roughly inside that 0 0.7, 0 0.75 range. And, you know, at 10 pounds and they're moving at 0.75 now, right. We're improving explosiveness and power. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. I love to hear it. Um, I got a perch specific question for you. Um, so it's, I mean, it seems like these guys are, are, are bought into the, the whole velocity based training side of things. Right. And so when you're, when you're, um, I, I guess like utilizing other, other types of technology, so maybe like a linear position transducer, or like a, you know, an accelerometer or something like that. How, how do the, how do those systems kind of compare to, um, to a perch system and, and, um, and in their eyes and in your eyes? Um, to be honest, to really, I've only been able to, I've only been using the perch. <laughs> yeah. So when yeah. I say I've only been using the perches, I mean, once I got it, I fell in love with it and I didn't really, I mean, well, once I had everything I needed, I didn't really go looking for anything else, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, once I got it, I mean, we, cause we got our first system in September and obviously all the coaches just started playing with it and having fun with it. Um, and obviously I started kind of getting crazy with the numbers. So just the fact that it's a camera. I mean, the setup for, I mean, part of my language, this, the ease of setup for it is just ridiculous. Like I can't believe I, we leave it on our rack 24 seven. That doesn't come off our rack. Um, the only thing we move is the battery and the, um, and then the tablet, you know, and the, the battery and the tablet is, I mean, it takes, it takes two minutes to set up, plug the battery in, toss the tablet up there. I'll go grab a drink, fill up my water bottle, I'll come back, it's loaded, put the exercise on there, and then I'm working, you know? Yep. Um, it's not it's not some 20-minute setup. And then not only that, I get all the numbers on the backside. So once I start working, I'm not really looking to try and see, like, what the numbers are immediately necessarily in the session comparatively, right? right. I say, hey, we're focusing on power. I want to make sure that you're hitting inside of this range. We're going to adjust the load. This is where you should start at based off your numbers. But based on how you feel today, we may go down, we may go up, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, your first set, you were above that number. We need to add more load, right? Oh, you're below that number. We need to take some off, right? Um, yeah. But then I, I come back on the backside and use the website portal to look at all of that in comparison. And yeah. then I have, my own, I have my own sheet that I take all those numbers and plug into, and then I can evaluate that at a later time. Yeah. And then that's where I would use those numbers 
to dictate my programming going forward. Yeah. Right. So now I see what guys are hitting. I look at everybody comparatively in a group and I start to make decisions based off that. Like yeah. one of the things about baseball players, you know, you go to any good high school strength conditioning program for baseball, or if you go to any good college strength conditioning program for baseball, one thing I guarantee you that they're going to do is make them stupid strong. They are usually already very, very, very strong. So what would happen is we would have guys come in and they would have, I mean, I would say 70 to 75% of their load. And they were really out shooting the numbers I was giving them because they were already so, because they were already so strong. Now I kind of gave them a number to hit as far as velocity goes and they would do better than that. But that means that's kind of a quality that they already have. So what happened was once I brought the load down and I got more into 60% and 40% of that load, they couldn't hit the velocities needed, yeah. which means they didn't have, they didn't have enough speed. So right. then programming wise, I say, I probably need to incorporate a little more speed stuff. So we would honestly superset, we would probably aim 40% to 60% inside that range. And we would superset that with like a band assisted jump um, where it's an overspeed jump where they're moving a little bit faster, have them come back and do those more sets after that first initial set. Um, and what would happen is they would, they would tick up a little bit and we'd kind of get back into those velocities we needed based on those loads. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, that's incredible. What are you seeing as far as like, um, like sprint numbers in conjunction with, you know, the, them getting faster and, uh, as they're lifting weights as well? Um, so we actually use a GPS system to okay. track their, their sprint numbers. So we used a GPS system for the first two and a half months. Um, and then we switch over to lasers towards the yeah. end of the year. Um, yeah. one, because I don't want to just bury them with the same numbers over and over again. Right. Yep. Um, just to just kind of give them something different to look for. Um, in that first two and a half months, we had an average of three miles per hour improvement. Unreal. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And once again, like I said, that's, I mean, that's speed, right? Speed's one of those, the, the, the tide that raises all ships and that's kind of how we see it. Um, now, not only that, our average, our average vertical across the facility is about 33 inches. Um, and that started off at 29. So average and vertical across the whole facility after about four months has improved four inches. So that's about an inch a month. Now yeah. that doesn't account for outliers. Um, and then, and then that, that's across all jumps. So that's non-counter movement, counter movement and approach jumps. Um, yeah. We have some guys that average 39 inch verticals. Um, yeah. yeah, we we have some guys that are averaging, you know, 32. But one of the goals we have is we want them to average a 30 inch vertical on all their jumps. And typically what we do on Tuesdays and Fridays, um, we'll warm up, we'll do our warm up. And then when the warm-up's done, they get three jumps. They get a non-counter movement jump, a counter movement jump, and an approach jump. And that's kind of how we gauge where they're at, right? That's how we gauge where you're at for the day. Um, and then that's how we can also kind of start making, you know, choices and make decisions later on in the workout. Because those are typically our power and strength days where we would utilize the purge. Yeah. So to say all that, um, because we were able to hone in more on that speed aspect for them, um, we saw some pretty quick jumps. Um, our laser, our laser time, like I said, we just got into laser times right at the end of December. Um, and in December of this year, the guys that we had last year were already beating their numbers from the year before when they ended. So <laughs> roughly to say we're, they were about two months ahead of where they were at last year. Um, yeah. to be honest, to be honest, part of the issue we're having now is, what's what's too much right so when i say what's too much is we have four guys that jump over 43 inch verticals now and yeah. exactly so it's like i mean it's <laughs> it's fantastic you know and we have those same four guys are also running 22 23 miles per hour on gps and we we do what's called one to 11s where we start our laser one yard away from the start line and then it's <laughs> one yard behind the 10 yard line so it's a laser start and a laser stop. The coach doesn't interfere. Um, and they're running one to 11s in one, 1. 1.45 and 1.43, you know, yeah. which is yeah. light, which is lightning, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, 
and I'm, it's enough. I mean, it's enough to steal at least 20 to 30 bags a year. So yeah. I say that is they have enough speed. They have enough vertical power, you know, um, now what are some KPIs we need to look for for them? Because <laughs> them becoming more powerful vertically may not necessarily be a KPI anymore for them. If you can jump 45 inches in the air, like you kind of got enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Um, yeah. So, so we're now we're we're at this time of the year now where we're trying to see what low hanging fruit we can go after to make the biggest bang for our buck. Because we've, I mean, this this sounds selfish, but we've kind of hit a lot of our goals that we set at the beginning of the year with these guys. I mean, yeah. and we we hit them early. We hit them earlier. <laughs> right. We hit them right. earlier than what we did before. But it was because we got to hone in on exactly what each guy needed. So, yep. yeah, no, I mean, that's incredible. And it's, um, I mean, it, it's exactly what you said, right? Like if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And so, um, yeah. I I'd love to, if you're okay with it, sharing your screen, I'd love to dig into the data yeah, yeah, for a sure, bit. Sure. And, and mostly I, I want to cover a lot about like, um, how you're using this to inform your programming, right? Like how are you using, I mean, you, you said it yourself, right? Like you're on the floor and you, you know, Hey, like you're above this threshold. Like let's, let's, let's add a little weight. Let's get back down to this threshold. Hey, you're below it. Let's take a little bit of weight off. Right. Like that's great. Like that's, I mean, that's how you do it on the floor, right? Like what are you doing with this data um, afterwards to help inform tomorrow? I guess. Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll preface this. This is my sheet personally, because I don't want to give out any information on any of our guys. Um, yep. I will, I will totally reference I'll reference some of our guys without giving names. So that way everybody kind of understands what I'm going through. But other than that, I'll share my sheet. Um, and okay. this is mine. So no one gets to laugh at me. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is a sheet I created. And once again, it's, if you can't, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Right. So whenever I wanted an easy way to be able to find out the percentage without having to do all the math for it, right? So based off this sheet, all you have to do is click in what their max is and it will adjust the rest of the numbers for them. So I'll be, I can use um, some of the sheets, especially that purchase provided, and I can estimate their max based off velocities from previous sessions and things of that nature. Um, and then I can also, if I, if I go down, um, utilizing NSCA protocols, I can make an estimation for a max. So if I change, like if I do, you know, let's do 300 for four reps and that's a PR, I've never done that before. It'll estimate my max to be 333, right? So based off that, I can take that number and I can go plug it in here. And then based off that max, I'm going to be able to choose like, hey, we're focusing more on power today. So we might try and go 60, 65%. So that's 297 to 321 on the bar, right? And then I'm going to be able to utilize my other velocities um, to say, hey, this is what velocity I'm looking at. So from here, you'll be able to see this is how I'm able to keep track of all those numbers. So I have their sprint speed in miles per hour. Um, that's their approach jump from the top. We utilize the jump mat. We, so we'll do a four test, a four jump test on the jump mat. Um, and we kind of utilize that as our RSI. So that's my vertical with my ground contact time. I spent a little too much time on the ground. Um, we mm -hmm. utilize heart rate to make sure we're staying in the right zones as well. Um, these are the strength numbers and then these are the power numbers, right? So these are the power numbers we're looking for. These are all in wattage because we'll utilize the Kaisers for this. Um, anything that the perch allows on here is these numbers are usually based off what I get from the perch on the backside. So yeah. now from there on the body weight. So we like to also give prescriptions based off body weight. So if we're doing a power squat, we may have them start off at 1.75 times their body weight. The next set, they'll do two times their body weight. Next set, they'll do 225. And then they're trying to hit a higher power number than what they would have up here, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so then here, I put percentages, but in reality, sometimes if the bar was too light or if it was too light, I, the 25% was going to be kind of what we anchored that number on, like the bar. Um, so like a reverse lunge, that was just 45 bar. And that's how fast I was able to move the bar. So I'm also looking at, percentage of velocity decline so what the difference is between each level um mm -hmm. and then from there you'll be able to see i have my curve here and then i have my trend line so i could see that um the load that i lifted here on my, well, let's go reverse lunge my load that i lifted here where it was 185 is off that trend line so it's a little yeah. bit above um but then i have my load my heaviest load is below so i know for me personally 
strength's always been an issue. I was a soccer player. I was not <laughs> blessed to go to a college strength and conditioning program that um, put weight on me, but I can run yeah. forever if that helps. <laughs> so strength. <laughs> hey, is, everyone's got their strength, right? <laughs> yeah, strength, pure absolute strength for me is typically my issue, but I can move very fast. So I can typically add a little bit lighter loads and be able to move faster than um, at least along those lines, what relatively fast to what I need to. Um, yeah. And then we'll do that same thing. We'll do that same thing for sprinting well as well. So then we also utilize jump test here. So this is the four times jump that we use on the jump mat. So ground contact time, jump height. Um, and I put it as our size. So just an equation of those. So I can add that in six inch, 12 inch, 18 inch, 24. And it'll give me the average RSI of all that. So I can see how well I'm translating that strength I'm producing into elasticity and into, um, into performance. So yeah. these are these are the sheets I've kind of adopted to make sure I make it as simple as possible. Um, and then what, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll print these sheets out and guys will be able to have these sheets and they just use them as a reference point, right? Okay. So I'll say, hey, look, today we're focusing on power. So we're going to aim for that 60 to 65, right? Or, hey, we're focusing more on speed. So I want you to go to this 40%, 30%, 40% number here, um, anything in between that. And we're trying to look at this type of velocity. So now they may do their first set at 148 if they're hitting higher than the velocity I need, so they may be hitting above 1.2, I may say, hey, I need this to be between 1.1, 1.2. If you're hitting above that, I need you to add a little more load. If they go to 198 and they're hitting below that number, they may need to take some off, right? But this yeah. number just kind of gives us that starting spot. Um, it's never the end-all, be-all, but it's kind of gives us a reference point to start that load. And then based on what, based on what they're feeling that day, um, based on how they are that day, there we're going to be able to adjust that so for instance major league baseball player um we have three sets of back squat five four three um and with those rep schemes i'm looking to develop power right so i'm i'm looking to try and hit inside of a velocity between 0.65 to 0.75 for him um and he really can't do anything more than that volume because he's already just taken on over 150 games right so first set, he comes in, he puts 225 on the bar, right? And he does it for five. And what happens is he outkicks his coverage with the velocity. Perfect. Next set, we went up to 315 based on how he was feeling that day, right? First, it's four reps. First two reps, he's inside that zone. Next two reps, he's moving a little bit slower. Said, okay, next set, we're going to go down to 285 and we're going to hit three reps and we're going to try and stay right inside that zone. Next three reps, he hits all inside the zone, right? So we are able to adjust the load each set based on the velocity we're trying to hit for him. Um, yeah. And that way we drove that adaptation for him um, to developing more power, but then we didn't have to use an excessive amount of volume or excessive amount of sets in order to do that. Yep. Now, um... I used to ask a subjective question here. Objective data, we love it. Obviously, you know, we produce a ton of it. Um, how are these guys um, relaying to you that they're feeling, I guess? You know, like for, from a subjective standpoint, are they, are they feeling fresh as daisies? Are they, you know, feeling better than ever? Or are they, you know, they're still going through the bumps and bruises of the, of the off season? Yeah, so, I mean, we will utilize um, rate of perceived exertion, yep. to be honest. Last year, whenever we did training, we did all of our training off RPE. Um, and when I say all of our training off RPE, I would just come out there and say, hey, look, it's Friday. I want you to focus on strength. You have five sets of six reps. I want you to try and get as heavy as you can that you know that you can control, right? So immediately from them, the load's on them. If they didn't get above 315, that's because they didn't think they could get six reps you know, above 315 for those sets. Um, now we still utilize RPE, but the RPE kind of comes in at the beginning of the set, right? Um, and then after that, we let the numbers tell them, you know, once they, I mean, if, if you're not feeling too hot today, you might want to go a little bit below what these numbers are saying, you know, and that's based off, yeah. that's based off how your warm up felt. That's based off how you felt in power. Like if your jumps that we do in power are 
higher than what you're usually getting, you pop, your body's probably ready to take on a little more load, right? Yeah. If your jumps are lower, then you probably want to be really safe to start. And then we'll gauge it from there, right? So that RPE and obviously how they're feeling is what we'll be able to start the conversation about what, what load you should begin with. Um, and then from there, I let the numbers do the talking because my, my new favorite phrase to tell people, I mean, and this is obviously too, because I just started getting the perch was uh, <laughs> women lie, men lie, numbers don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I say that because, you know, a guy would put 315 on there and he'd move it at, you know, 0. 0.82 yeah. and which is, I mean, cooking, which is, I mean, moving 315 to 0.82 is power, you know, and I'd say, hey, you could probably add a little bit more. And he's like, oh, I don't know. And I said, look, like you're actually training more strength speed, not necessarily true power because I need that number to come down a little bit. So because of what you're showing me, you, you could do that. I know for a fact you can do that because this is what the numbers are telling me. Women lie, men lie, numbers don't. And then yeah. of course it's like, yeah. okay, okay, let me, let me try it. And then they add 10 pounds on each side for a total of 20 more pounds. And they're hitting right inside that number. And it's like, all right, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, that's incredible. And I'm curious too, like, do you have any more kind of like, um, I guess similar anecdote? I mean, I think that this like um, velocity based training is so ex experiential, right? Like you have to kind of right. get a piece of technology, um, start lifting with it, kind of see how you're, you're feeling or your athletes are feeling in order to kind of truly understand um the importance behind it so I, I i love storytelling i think it's the best way to kind of relate a lot of this stuff and i'm curious if you've got any any more in your back pocket here oh yeah i get yes yeah, so I'll, I'll i'll give you one more because this one's fresh <laughs> um so we have we have a pitcher who he was so when he started with us he was in short he was in short a um he started with us last year I mean, he'll openly, he'll openly tell you and openly admit to you. He's like, I came in, I was out of shape. I wasn't a good athlete. Um, I let, I let being in season get the most of me and I just didn't take care of my body. Right. So he spent all of last year, just becoming a better athlete, moving better, right. Having higher quality. I mean, having higher quality workouts because he used to be the guy that would just go to the gym, lift weights, lift weights, get pump, get a pump and then leave. Right. Um, so he spent the whole last year moving better, understanding what it was like to truly work out for performance um, and how to improve that, right? So by the end of the year, um, he got called up to AAA um, and he, he was about to make his debut and, or he was going to get called up and got traded um, and got traded straight up. And then what happened was the team he got traded to didn't, they, they knew they weren't going to make the playoffs. Um, yeah. and pretty much open, pretty much openly told him straight up, like, Hey, you, um, we're, we're not going to give you your debut yet, but we're planning on you being like our starter next year. Right. So yeah. obviously he comes into this off season, pumped, jazzed, ready to work. Um, obviously he has, when I say high intent, he has high intent for the goals he has in the off season. Um, and of course we just started utilizing the perch, which is different than last year. So for him personally, Everything we did last year worked, right? Now he comes in the off season. I say, hey, I need you to trust me. We're going to try something different. <laughs> we're going to try something that we did. We're going to try something we did do last year. So of course he's like, um, but everything we did last year worked. Let's just do it again. I said, that's, that's not, necessarily, uh, not necessarily the case, right? right. <laughs> so we start, we utilize the perch. We, and I say we utilize it is, I think he lifted heavy once every three weeks. And when I say lifted heavy, once every three weeks, uh, it might've been a heavy reverse lunge. Three weeks later, heavy hex bar, right? Mm -hmm. So he's not even doing the same heavy lift. He's just, we're just utilizing training residuals inside of the days we know we need to hit it to make sure we're getting our strength adaptation inside of those training residuals. Yeah. Majority of that training for him was focusing on speed, strength, and power in the weight room, yeah. right? And, and I say that because, of course, that means he's moving a little bit lighter loads faster than what he's used to, right? right. But then we're also, we're also going to kind of get in that zone where he's moving the bar 
pretty fast and the load's fairly heavy on him. He can feel the load, but he's still moving it fast. So by no sense of the word is he, is he doing strength training in his mind, right? Right. So um, he gets a call. They want him to come in early, right? So he actually just left last week, right? Got it. Yep. Um, so on, on his way out, it was his last hex bar deadlift day. Um, and he improved his hex bar deadlift by 60 pounds. Holy cow. Wow. So you maxed yeah. out on his last day here? and Yeah. Well, so, yeah. I say maxed out. He, he utilized the perch. And yeah. based, I mean, essentially, it probably could have been higher. But, I mean, it's playing it safe. He hit, he hit 540 for two. Yeah. Right? Wow. wow. Um, yeah. And, when, and when he came in, he, whenever we did our early lifts early on, he was only able to get 480 for mm-hmm. two, two to three, the third one, the third one, I don't want to count it. Cause it didn't, it wasn't the prettiest, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but essentially, essentially he increased it by 60 pounds. Yeah, right. Wow. Um, but the focus for him on the off season was being able to move faster right? because based off his, based off his force velocity profile and based off what he'd done already, he was already plenty strong. Don't mm-hmm. lose the adaptation of strength, which is what we hit inside those residuals. Um, we need to focus on what your weakest at. And then what happened was he was able to translate into moving the bar faster with that heavier load because we focused on his speed. Um, right. And also before he left, he was three miles per hour up on his velocity pitching wise. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's where, once again, it's like, what, what you know, what correlates? Um can you say that that three miles per hour was correlated to his hex bar? Maybe, maybe not. Um, all I know is his hex bar went up and his velocity went up too. So yeah. <laughs> um, every, every, everything we were doing for him. Um, and of course he has a great pitching coach too, that worked with him as well as cleaning up his arm path, cleaned up the arm path, didn't have any issues in the off season, didn't have any pains, was able to train pain-free for the whole off season. Um, yeah. He was able to take that new approach to what we were implementing with him, um, bought into it and was doing the things we asked and it paid off for him. So now mm-hmm. he's, now he's at camp. I'll be able to check in with him probably earlier, early next week. I, nice. I try not to, I try, I, I try not to be on the guy's shoulders and hit him up every day. <laughs> um, but I'm sure, I'm sure he's doing great and getting excited. Yeah. No, and that's awesome. I, I love to hear it. Um, it's great. And it's, it's good to always kind of know that, uh, regardless of whether or not you're maxing out like you can still get stronger as long as you're optimally uh providing intent uh under that barbell you know right and that's i mean and that's even even for our high school athletes right i mean and i say with our high school athletes you know we we focus on proper movement and proper strength training to start off right um the people once they progress to a level that they can move a sufficient amount of load We'll put the perch on them for the sole fact that we want them to move concentrically explosively, right? Yep. It's controlled eccentric still, but we sometimes we'll put it on just peak velocity and say, mm-hmm. look, I want you to control it. Once you feel like you're at a good depth, I want you to drive out of the bottom and see how high you can get that number to go. Right. Yep. And then just from that, just from that alone, they're being able to express more power and feel, and feel like they're getting stronger. Yep. Yep. Got to love intent. Um, all right. I don't want to take up too much of your day here. Um, I do have one final question for you though. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I guess I'm curious. I mean, again, a lot of people kind of get stuck in this idea of, of the application of velocity based training and then don't necessarily know where to begin. Um, so I guess I'm just curious if you have any kind of advice for coaches who, who are thinking about it, interested in it, but, uh, might not have taken that dive yet. Yeah. So to be honest, I would all, I mean, obviously I did it. So I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say what you do. Um, yeah. I would just, I would take the dive into getting your velocity-based training device and then collect the numbers from your people. So when I say collect the numbers from your people is, you know, of course I took into reference these velocities from, you know, all the other resources that I pull from. Um, Obviously Brian Mann's a huge guy. Um, And then obviously uh, Jake has been able to send me over a lot of information that Purchase put together. And I kind of use that as a baseline. But then what I do is I, I would go chart the loads and the velocities of the people I'm training. And yeah. I would look at that and I would say, hey, you know, whenever, 
I have guys that are lifting, you know, hex bar 315, you know, the average velocity that we're moving is 0.68. And that's probably hitting a little bit lower than what I want them to move at. So mm -hmm. whenever I go into the session, I will say, hey, as a group, we average 0.68. I want to try and get that average to 0.72, you know, as a group. So mm -hmm. let's focus on trying to move that ball with a little more intent, a little more speed, right? And it may be, you know, it may be where some guys are moving 305, maybe moving 325, but we're inside that range trying to get that average up within that group, right? Um, because like you said, everybody, there's a lot of people now that have used velocity-based training with football players, right? Um, football player is completely different than a baseball player, you know? Yeah. Um, and one of the things I've kind of been doing on the side, um, I utilize my personal trainings to kind of experiment. And I mean, that sounds bad, but um, I have I have four volleyball players that I personal train on the side. Um, yeah. And I, I say that because I, I, I still, I say that personal train. They're together. I have two of them together, two of them together, two of them together. Um, and I utilize the perch and those lifts to kind of get an idea about where a female volleyball player should be at in these lifts, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's different than the baseball players and it's different than the NFL combine guys that I've been training. Um, and so now that kind of gives me a frame of reference about where you're at along the life cycle from a high school player to a collegiate player to, you know, a professional athlete that's 25 years old um, yeah. and what kind of intent and what kind of velocities are moving that with what type of loads, you know? Yeah. Um, so the easiest thing to do is, I mean, you got to have the equipment first, but then also, I mean, just look at your, look at your people's numbers, use it, yeah. utilize it with your people and use those people numbers. Um, there's a coach here in Texas um, at Azel high school. Unfortunately, he doesn't use perch. Sorry. I can't say he does. Um, totally he uses, he uses, he, he uses VMAX pro. Um, but I think he does an amazing job, Monty Spartman, about getting the numbers from his people and then essentially comparing them across each other, you know, mm -hmm. um, because you're going to be able to get a good idea about what you want from training your people. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think there's probably not a coach uh, in the world who hasn't done some sort of like pre-lift assessment of some sort, but when they get a new athlete, in, exactly. right? and like, this is just part of that as well. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate the time, Taylor. I, I think this was awesome. Um, I learned a lot. And so uh, I, uh, I'll end it here, but, uh, but thank you so much for joining us and um, really appreciate your time and, and, and uh, your, your patronage over here at Perch as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nika. I appreciate it. Anytime. Awesome. Cool. Um, I will uh, talk soon. Yep. Sounds good.